Hello there. Welcome to the World Cafe podcast. This podcast has been designed with created content that centers on the power of words. Can we really do anything without speaking? Can we really do anything without the agency of words? Yes, that is what this podcast is all about. And I am your host, Amakri Isobe, your neighborhood word trader. I believe in the power of words. For it is the unit of creation I trade in words to profit my world. It is always fun coming into the studio with you. Yes, guys, don't worry, I'm going to say it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good everything. That's why we're here. Welcome to the World Cafe Live Show. Yes, it's always exciting when I get behind the microphone within the space, knowing that you are there listening. Ah, it makes my day. How are you? I am good. I'm fine. It's like the rains came early this year in Abuja and it's been raining cats and dogs. Well, the elephants are somewhere around anyway. So that's, you know, that's how it is. I'm fine. I'm fine here, you know, looking at the changes all around us and embracing it. So what are we going to be doing today? Yes, you're seeing it on the screen already. Her voice, her life and singing. It's a lady. Uh, what's her name? She is called Noella. That's her stage name. When she comes on, she's going to tell us more about herself. She's a singer, songwriter and all of that. She has an amazing story. And like you know, on the show, we always bring individuals, personalities with amazing stories to share with us, to encourage us and build us also to take those wonderful, amazing steps. I know you want to see her. I know you are itching to see her and to hear her voice. Okay, enough of all this. Let me bring her on. Where is she? (laughs) And uh, she is here. (laughs) Hi, Noella. Hi. Welcome. Good Good evening. Good evening. So how are you? I'm very well. I'm excellent. Doing great. Beautiful. Beautiful. So I know we're both in the same the same city now, but yeah. different parts of the city. So what is it like at your own end? Well, it's it's a cool evening here. I yeah. got in from work and it had just finished raining at, in this side mm-hmm. or at this side. So um, it's it's a pretty cool evening. I think everyone is just chilling in their houses. <laughs> yeah, coupled with all the heavy, heavy fuel, whatever. You understand? Everybody wants to stay at home this season. <laughs> Thank you. So let us get to meet this wonderful personality on the show today, Noella. That's her stage name, but I want her to introduce herself, you know, and say one or two things about herself. So who is this individual? Okay, so my name is Noel Uloko. Yeah, that's um, my, my full name. But I use Noella for, for the music. And um, I am a singer, a gospel singer. I lead worship. And I am a recording artist. I have a debut album and several singles to my credits. And I have a new song coming out mm. in two days. In two days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll get to talk yes. about that. <laughs> okay okay yeah and uh, yeah so i've been doing this since i was a child really i mm-hmm. i started to sing when i was in sunday school and then uh through my dad i got the opportunity to also do special songs in the adult mm-hmm. church uh, that helped to really boost my my courage you know singing mm-hmm. before an audience or singing publicly and that continued until i got to secondary school um, I joined a couple of music bands here and there in my junior secondary school, senior secondary school. I went on to my tertiary education mm. and I kept at it. I kept at it. So if there is something I can trace throughout my, throughout my life is the consistency, um, okay. the passion and the attention, the dedication I've given to music. You know, mm. So in the university, I also was a part of a couple of bands before I eventually became the music director of my fellowship then, the Minas Campus Fellowship, Uni Just Chapter. Mm. And then from that point on, I graduated. And like a year later, 
I got to launch uh, my debut album, Wealthy Places. So that's like a summary about my musical life. <laughs> yes. Thank beautiful. You, sir. Beautiful. Now, 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 looking at where you're coming from, obviously, I mean, you've been in the choir, you've been singing gospel, church, amazing. Yeah. Share with us a couple of challenges maybe you faced along the way getting to this point where you are today. Okay, so, um, yeah, I've faced a couple of challenges. Um, and so I've been through a lot, like I've been through a lot in life. <laughs> um, my, my parents got divorced at some point. Uh, that that hit me real hard. I mean, coming from, anyone coming from a broken home will understand the impact, the psychological impact that that can have. Mm-hmm. Um, so that had its own place. Um, while I was in the university, yeah, I tried, you know, singing, joining some bands, and then we had big dreams. At some point, some of our members got distracted and everything just, you know, Hello, ended man. there. So, yeah, yeah. So it really hurt me because, um, I mean, and the, the leader, you know, of the team, who was supposed to lead us the way, you know, like guide us and cast the vision, was the one who just, you know, just let everything go. So I just felt like I was at the mercy of people too much that didn't seem to, you know, Hmm. have focus. Um, But at some point, like I said earlier on, before I graduated, I got to be the musical director of the Winners Campus Fellowship. And it really helped me in a number of ways because... You know, you can be gifted, but the world is filled with a lot of gifted people. Mm. Um, but the world doesn't have that many leaders, you know, people who mm. can, who have the, the leadership skills and the management skills beyond the gifting. So mm-hmm. what being a music director helped me to, to, to become was be a better person, you know, honing my leadership yes. skills. I'm already the first born of four, you know, so by virtue of my position as the first child and the first girl, I'd already mm-hmm. started to you know, take on a lot of leadership roles. But um, being being in a position where you have to manage people mm-hmm. who are equally talented um, and who may even be more talented than you are yeah. requires another skill set, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, so I'm really grateful for that opportunity. It helped me a lot. And so um, when I went on, I was still speaking of challenges now. Um, I've faced at different points, like, what am I going to do with what I have? Mm-hmm. It was a challenge for me. What am I going to do with what I have? Am I just going to be in church singing? Um, I, I knew I had a passion to write. I didn't know what I was going to do with what I had. So um, I think for me, breaking uh, the, the the breakthrough points was when I started to serve during my during my national youth service call. I yeah. was serving at my parents' church in the choir, and then um, in volunteering, you know, leading worship and praise. There were times that we had special programs with special themes, and we couldn't find any song anywhere that could match those themes those themes you know mm. so I, I i would write you know just you know write something that would fall into the theme of the program or the month or something and then one of those times i one of those times i i had we had presented or ministered the song i'd written and somebody walked up to me a guest minister was like that's so powerful this 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 who wrote that song and i was like it's me and he was surprised like have you been in the studio before um, I was like, no, I haven't been to the studio before. He said, girl, you better get to the studio. And that was another hurdle I needed to cross, which was mm-hmm. I didn't want to go for any, you know, substandard studio or anything. I was in Kaduna at the time, and I Kaduna, Nigeria, and I needed, mm-hmm. I started to ask questions. Like, Who is the best producer here? You know, and then I went, remember I was just a youth copper, and then I mm-hmm. went and... The, the figure they gave me to, to produce the album was like a six-digit figure, you know, and I didn't know. So that was another challenge um, that I had to cross, um, yeah. but I stepped out in faith. So through all of the 
the challenges I've had, um, I've just had to, you know, brace myself and, and because I know that with God, I can do all things. Mm-hmm. And even when I, so with that come before a mountain, I just know that that mountain must give way. And so I, I, I just struck a deal with the manager or the producer and I told him, listen, I don't have this money now. Can you let me pay, you know, in bits? I, I couldn't even finish paying. You know? <laughs> when we are done with the project, then at the end, he was like, um, I, I remember I was on my way to my PPA then that morning and I was just singing. It wasn't far from my house. I was just singing and I got a text message from him and he says, I had raised like 70% of the money. Okay. And then I got a text message from him and he says that while he was praying that morning, the Holy Spirit told him that he should waive up the remaining 30%. Mm, beautiful. You know, so that was the first miracle. Um, so in terms of overcoming financial challenges, while I was in the studio, I got to meet a lot of people. Then we had people, a lot of the A-list artists, like uh, Pastor Chris Morgan, Pastor Elijah Oyela, they used to come from Abuja to Kaduna Den to produce mm-hmm. in this particular studio. So in that studio, I got to meet a lot of people that ordinarily I wouldn't have met if I had not mm. taken the type of faith that I took. And while I was mm. working in the studio, um, particularly um, Minister Chris Morgan took an interest in my work, you know, and I was producing. I didn't know how I was going to launch. I didn't know how I was going to go about um, as producing the CDs after we were done with mm. the production. But I found favor. And he and his wife offered, you know, to take on the marketing aspect of the album. Wow. Well, wow. That is the album that contains the, the popular song, uh, you will not suffer my foot to be moved. Mm. Carry your presence everywhere. So if 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 this um if I'm not taking the step of faith, I won't have met these people. I won't have enjoyed mm. the favor I enjoyed, that allowed the work to spread. You know, um, mm. Mr. Chris Morgan and his wife took me all the way to Lagos, you know, to mass produce. I think for the launching, he used his money to mass produce like five thousand copies of CDs several handbills, you know, everywhere around Kaduna. Um, the flyers were everywhere and everything, you know. So that was mm-hmm. how I officially got launched into the music ministry. That because song, launched... yeah. that song, Awesome God, that's the yes. title, I guess. Yes, you uh, know, each time so you So the sing actual it. title each... is um, Who Am I? Who am I? Mortal man awesome. Mortal man awesome. There's there's a there's a story behind that song because it's not just a song. It's not just a tune. Hmm. It 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 feels like uh, somebody who's who touched something and all of a sudden the only way you can express and you know appreciate God for that is to put them in words and lyrics and everything. I know there's a story behind that Hmm. song. I, I wanted to share it with us. Mortal man, awesome God. Who am I? Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. So um, so the story is I like I mentioned, I I, I was music director at, at Winners Campus Fellowship at the University of Joss. And at that time there was this um religious clash or crisis or ethnic cleansing. I'm not quite sure what phrase to use to describe. Um, what happened in just then but then there were lots of killings going on and um, you know when we were in the hostel we used to hear about it happening you know at certain places in town and you just feel that because uh, you're in the hostel you know there will be enough security to protect students and all that but one of those times I remember vividly um, we were just wrapping up our project final year project and I heard gunshots like gone shots in the hostel and everybody was just shouting like everybody go down go down go down so um the security we thought we had had been breached and we were all living in fear hmm. i don't know if you know the right word to use it so it either it, it and it came with a lot of trauma you hmm. know so you're going to bed you're not sure if something's going to happen in the middle of the night when I successfully submitted my final project, I, I would say that I I ran out of mm. jobs. Mm. You know, even leaving the hostel, trying to get 
to um a relative's house where i could stay before i could leave just everything was just like how do we find a way you enter a bike oh no don't go through this place go through this place you know when i finally left just and i got to kaduna it was like wow i made it because there were several students that didn't make it mm. you know and um, you know being one being a singer you know a lot of singers i know they, they are in love with the book of psalms yeah you know so, so a lot of you know what i had been meditating on was already deep down in my spirit and then one of those times i was cooking um and then i the, the melody started to form you're not suffer my foot to be that now that's from uh psalms 121 that part of the song is from yeah. psalms 121 yeah carry a yeah. and so i began to you know write and and as I was writing, like I was in the kitchen, you know, cooking. Like I said, I was my sister, and I and I took the song to her. I was like, "I'm singing this. How does this sound?" She's like, "Oh, it sounds awesome," you know. And then I just, I just did it. I had no idea how much of a blessing, um, and how far that song will go, mm-hmm. how much of a blessing that song will be, and how far it will go. You Maybe know, if you ask me, I have eight songs on the album. I didn't think that that would be the hit song. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but God, God is amazing. God now that, that that song, each time each time we listen to it, even myself and my family, it's 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 it, it ministers. It speaks volume to us. You know, speaks of God's presence, His His guidance, His protection, right. and all of that. You know, thank you, thank you so much for, for for sharing this for sharing this on the show. So, what are you up to now, given what is happening? you know, in the music space and all of it. What are you up to? Okay, so um, I I am working on putting out more songs. Well, I think that I haven't really done a lot in that area. And that's because I had to break at some point, go to school, do my master's and all that. So mm. um, I had to slow down a little on some of, and couple with the fact that I have a day job. But I'm back to releasing um, new songs again. I released a single in January, in March this year, um, and I'm releasing another one um, mm. in two days. And yeah. before the end of the year, I have an album that I'm going to be releasing. Mm. Um, from next year, I want to have worship meetings um, that okay. will not just be something that happens in Abuja, in Nigeria. I want to push it. Um, to be international worship meetings, um, okay. looking at India, looking at Europe, looking at um, the United States. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so those are things that I am exploring. Okay. Okay. You know, yes, I'm also an itinerant singer, so I get to honor um, invitations to minister, okay. Okay. to sing. Yeah, so I'm going to be taking on more of that since I'm right. done with my second degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll see how that helps. Beautiful. Tell us about Friday's lunch. I is it, the title is is it Aya Chaba? I've got, I mean, I saw it on Aliya Chaba. <laughs> yes. Tell us about it. <laughs> okay, so Aliya Chaba is a song of Thanksgiving. Basically, okay. it's um. So when you hear Aliya Chaba, the temptation is to think that it is uh, purely in the Idoma dialect. By the way, Aliya Chaba means you've done more than enough in okay. Idoma. So right. if you hear Idoma, the Idoma tribe is, is from the Benue state side of Nigeria. So um, Aliyah Chaba is a thanksgiving song to God that speaks about how much he has done. He has done more than enough. Um, but the song, t- t- it's special because it takes it beyond, you know, it's wonderful to thank God for the things that he has blessed you with. Mm-hmm. But when you take your thanksgiving higher, you know, to appreciate him for what he did on the cross, Mm. for his death, his perfect sacrifice. The fact that because of his death, burial, and resurrection, Resurrection. his resurrection, we do not Mm -hmm. have to suffer eternal damnation. And in Mm -hmm. fact, if he never does anything at all, he has done more than enough enough by doing that alone. Because by virtue of his death, and his resurrection. He mm. has done everything. All we need to do is to connect by faith to his finished works. 
you know Beautiful. so the special thing about that song is that it doesn't just stop at thanking god for um you know material material testimonies like maybe getting a house getting a car um mm. getting married or something but it takes you higher in mm. your thanks giving you know mm. to appreciate Beautiful. god for his perfect sacrifice and so yeah that's really what the song is about great 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 we're looking forward to it friday is just some uh barely 48 hours away so we're looking okay. we're looking forward to it and all of that now you know when 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 you come when you come and tell people i do gospel i i sing gospel i you know church music like they would want to call it they, they don't consider it to be sexy and all what not you know and you see like so for you from where you stand why gospel okay so um for me it's gospel because number one, it is my conviction okay so i want to believe that um art should be original it shouldn't be forced mm-hmm. so anyone who is singing whatever they are singing i believe that you should have they are probably convinced about whatever they are singing so i'm just simply singing my convictions i can't go and sing something simply because it is selling i will sing my convictions and i will give it the excellence the best possible excellent touch that it can get so that it can go as far as it can and the thing is that you know a lot of times when people you know after all the old gyrating and whatever mm-hmm. when people are on their own go and check out what they listen to mm-hmm. in the middle of the night um when 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 they're down and everything check out what they're listening to mm-hmm. it may not be what you think they listen to they come for mm-hmm. us they come like us you yeah. know and they are songs i remember somebody telling me one time that you know Ella, i i had a very terrible experience you know and then I was in the car driving and then I parked by the road and I just started playing your song and I put my head on the steering and your song was on repeat for 3 hours you know mm. um, so we know we know the need that we are meeting every human being has a spirit in fact every human being is a spirit that has yeah. a soul and lives in a body you have mm-hmm. spiritual needs you have Very spiritual true. needs what we sing is loaded with power because the word of god is power as we sing the word mm. of god it is mm. power and who know it they may not you know publicly you know declare it but we know they secretly nicodemusly exactly sir <laughs> exactly. Yeah. beautiful so, yes yeah, so, so we keep I... doing what we're doing beautiful guys we we we've been we've been discussing with noella uh that's her stage name you know and uh, her story is amazing you know she's a singer you know and uh, i've been following her for this beat and i just said to myself we need to bring her on the show you know to share with with with, with us within this space and you'll agree with me it's been i mean an amazing 20 minutes plus you know just listening to her talk about her story her dream and where she wants to get to you know and i, I want to encourage you if you're hearing this now Friday I mean it's just around the corner you know that's their chief uh, Alia Chaba is I mean it's going to be everywhere and even beyond Friday if you hear this okay. after Friday please go look for the song go listen to the song she's an amazing singer now considering what you have all laid out and all of that can you advise young singers out there young ladies you know who are also aspiring because somehow the music space has been has been over time dotted with a lot of unpleasant stories and all of that and people just like have this what i call it scary feeling can i go in there can i survive there speak to somebody out there about you know what that space is all about for you okay okay so i think i can just give a little bit of my story um i launched my my album in 2013 august i got i i got married traditionally in september 2013 and then uh got married in church on october 2013 so 
just barely two months after I launched my album, I was a wife, you know. And then in the marriage, I got pregnant. But um, in the eighth month, I lost both my... And I say, yeah, in the eighth month, I lost both my husband and my, my pregnancy. So sorry to hear about well, that. Oh, it's it's okay. It's in the past now. So I wasn't even I, like I I got married and I my husband was so you know focused on focused on this ministry. Now that you're young, give it your best shot. So when he passed, I didn't have anything. Like I didn't have a job. I didn't have a business. Music was my business, and it wasn't really fetching the kind of revenue that could really sustain me. Mm. Right now, listen. This is a young girl in a vulnerable state. Um, you know, how does she move on from this point? At that point in time, you it's just you and God. So you mm. really to know why you're even doing what you're doing. Because at that point mm. in time, I didn't have no money. At at a point, um, the house where I was with my late husband, the rent expired how to move out of the town and go and stay with a relative and I was just there trying to figure out how do I move and I and I all I had was me God me God praying 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 a lot in tongues because I believe you know in the prayer mm. language of time. praying a long mm. praying a lot in tongues and I believe that in those times I was processing a lot about my future mm kept the future in front of me and because I kept the future in front of me my mind could accommodate ideas mm. one thing that God told me in those times when it felt like I had been grounded he told me something keep showing up no matter how down you feel if you get an invitation even if it is not to any big stage that you have love you would have loved to go to mm. show up keep showing up and this is important because faith without works is dead. Let Absolutely. people know. Yes. Let people know that this is who you are and this is what you do. When you intro- mm. when you have a chance to meet people, introduce yourself. Give mm. them if you have a copy of a scale. I was doing that a lot. You know, they, they, in those times, there were people that would just say, okay, I, I sing, I do this. And I'll give them my CD and they'll give me 100,000 mm. to launch one CD. Mm. you know so I, yeah. I I could use that to now start taking and because I knew that I couldn't fail I didn't send myself God sent me yeah God you know so I just kept at it and kept at it and kept at it so I encourage every young girl there you don't yeah. need to compromise and mm. the truth is you know being a young woman in the state I found myself you know there are people who try to take advantage of me and it's unfortunate that these people were church people, people who I should have been looking up to, mm. pastors, you know, mm. that kind of thing. People who you expect should look out for you. But even when I went through some of those setbacks, I didn't give up. So there is the aspect of having financial challenges, the aspect of, you know, fighting for your life. Mm. You know, fighting for your life. I mean... When I say that I lost my my husband and baby in in the eighth month, I actually lost both of them in one week. Mm. So imagine that you don't even get to enjoy up to one year of marriage, and then all of your world is like just starts from 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 you. But I see the Bible says, "Looking unto Jesus, the author awesome. and the finisher." Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's what I did. I just kept looking unto God through the tears, through the fears. Through the lack, through the struggle, I kept looking onto Jesus, and He has proven Himself faithful all of this while. So I will encourage every young person: um, keep the faith. Every young girl, you don't have to compromise. Mm. Um, some of the biggest challenges you will face, especially if you're a Christian, is in church. You shouldn't allow that to discourage you. You shouldn't allow that to distract you. Mm. Stay focused. Yeah. Stay yeah. focused. There are people that God has kept to help you. Mm. And you have to keep on believing that each day you wake up, if it doesn't happen today, believe it will happen tomorrow. If it doesn't mm. happen 
or believe that it will happen the day after tomorrow. You mm. cannot afford to draw back. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Beautiful. I I love your vulnerability. You know, the new ability, as we call it, is vulnerability. When you are open, you know, knowing that you're being open is because God has got you all sorted figured out he's got your back so you're there encouraging people it's so amazing guys i i know you're enjoying this moment like i am also you know hearing from noella sharing her story not just you know about the singing and all that but her challenges and how through these challenges god has built a song out of it and the world is now drinking from how i mean this fountain you know blessing lives and all of that you can just like you heard her say you can it's possible holding on to god if not today tomorrow if not tomorrow don't worry there's a day called today so you just keep going in that faith amazing guys i i mean we can go on and on this conversation is 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 like we say it in nigerian palace it is with me it's just sweet <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you know, I mean, I, I I have to let her go. You know, uh, to also get some rest and get settled uh, for the next day. But before I let her go, I'd like her to, the way we usually say it on the show, one last word from you. You know, to that person out there, that lady, that man, that boy, that girl, about God's faithfulness and His goodness. One last word. Hmm. God cannot lie mm. to you. If he has told you something, any other thoughts you have is a lie. Mm. The devil always wants to make God look like a liar. He is the liar, not God. Mm. So whatever mm. God has told you, hold on to it. No matter mm. how long it takes, it will come to pass. And please... When you get promptings in your heart to take a step, take that step. Amazing. Your miracle is on that path. Take that step. Amazing. Thank you, Noella. Guys, you heard that. God cannot lie. I mean, he's true. He's true to the very end. And that's, that's our takeaway from this conversation today so whatever you do whatever you're facing it's a phase he will Mm. not lie is to hold on to him and see how he pulls you through amazing her voice her life and her singing we've been discussing with noella and uh guys you will agree with me it's been an amazing 30 minutes plus you know and i want to say a very big thank you to you noella for accepting to come and do this with us you know the, the word cafe is one place that i always say is a space where we come in to lean on one another's experience to forge a positive path and today you have brought your experience you know to add to this positivity within this space to drive us and we are so we are so grateful i want to say a very big thank you and I say, God bless you on this journey. And yeah. I mean, what he has begun, he will perfect it. I mean, your dreams, your desires, your prayers. I mean, yeah. we'll see you on that stage. Yeah. Not because it's big. No, not because the stage is big, but because your God is big. Yeah. <laughs> and I say, thank you, there. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. And guys, we have come to that point of the show when we always you know want to say goodbye but you know we're not going away because we will come back again with another interesting topic and guest and you know to talk about and share till we come your way again you know how we say it on the show bye for now Noella. yeah thank you everyone thank you sir so much thank you such an honor to have been on the show thank you you're sir. welcome all right take care I will you to sir. Bye. Bye. Awesome time it has been with you on the World Cafe podcast today. Thank you for being there. You can catch me up on my social media handles, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, all at Amakri Isoboye. Also, you can get copies of my books, A Cocktail of Words, The Color of Words, my HR Notebook, 
and hawkers focus on God on Amazon and Roving Heights online bookstores. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel at the same address at Amakri Isowe. I love to hear from you and how this podcast has impacted you. Thank you.